Welcome to a special edition of the Referrals Podcast. Introducing our new Daily Dose. We've assembled the ultimate crisis response team for your business. Generous leaders from around the globe teaming up to teach, guide, and lead you through this time of isolation and quarantine. Now, let's meet your host, Michael J. Mayer. Hey, everybody, this is Michael J. Mayer with another edition of the Daily Dose, your daily dose of positivity and productivity. I will tell you, I'm so excited about today's guest. I have to tell you, a master implementer, somebody who has literally taken the Gen Gen scene by storm in the last year or so. Can you believe that? In a year. And I will tell you that today's strategy, in my opinion, what he's going to cover will allow you to give the most amount of value in the shortest amount of time and get results from your relationships, literally referrals if you want them, from your relationships. We will be covering that in just one second. The first thing that I want to ask all of you is this is day 14, episode 14. How many of the episodes have you done of the daily dose? So have you done one? Is this your first one? If so, welcome to the daily dose. Is this two? Is this three? How many of the daily doses out of 14 have you attended live? Put your numbers. And we are looking at the comments right now and they're coming in. Tommy, how many have you attended? 11. 11 out of 14 live. Toral Schofer White is at 14. Stacy's at 11. Dave DeBrian, how many of you attended? Sean Woods, how many of you attended out of 14? Donna Owens is at 14. That, that's like, you gotta keep your perfect score if you're at 14. Sherry McGuire is at 13. Lori Knutson has been on and attended 14. Kristen Lanham's at 14. Tony's at 14. Listen, there's no shame in 10. There's no shame in two. The bottom line is Dave DeBrian's at 14 out of 14. So I love that. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate that. We've had some questions on how to do a watch party. So believe it or not, I am going to try that live. I'm gonna try to share my screen and do a watch party, which will probably blow up everything that we have so delicately streamed with technology, but I'm gonna do it. So here we go. I'm gonna share screen. I'm gonna go to Facebook. Oh yeah. We're doing this. We're doing it. Michael Mayer, don't say he never does anything new. All right, I'm going to open up Facebook. I'm going to go, I'll do it on my personal. All right, I'm going to go to the group. How many of you know how to do a watch party? Are you doing a watch party? If not, do it right now. Everybody start a watch party, except for you, Tommy. Don't start a watch party. All right, I'm going to go down. I'm in Gen Gen group. It really hates me right now. My internet hates me. Like, Jen Jen hates me. Starting a watch. There we go. Here we go. It's loading. Thank God I have Ethernet. Thank God I have like fiber to the curb because this is really, really pushing. There we go. There I am. Oh my God. I look so good. All right. We're going to do, I click on the upper right, the three dots. <laughs> this may be impossible. I don't know. I've never tried this before. And then I'm going to go, oh, I can't do it. I cannot personally start a watch party. Normally when you click on the three dots, it'll have a share. You can click on the share and from there, let me actually see if I can go down to share. Yeah. Let's see if this works. Share. Share in a group. I'm going to share to a page. I have 80,000 of us hanging out on my, uh, uh, look at the members, 1 million members. Okay, here we go. Uh, so share on a page you manage. Nothing like, haven't, there we go, right there. And shared live, live uh, from Jen Jen. Right? How many are you doing watch parties? 
I haven't lost you, have I? I better not. There. Oh my God, look at that. It's working. <laughs> All right, boom. And then I'm going to hit post. All right. We will see if that works later. I need to return to our regularly program. Oh, look at that. So I need to stop share. It may stop my live. I don't know. But I showed you how to do it live. I have to tell you that I am genuinely pleasantly surprised. That's the next thing we're going to do is the pleasantly surprised. So what have you been pleasantly surprised by during the quarantine times? And for many of you, it's for the last 24 hours because you told me yesterday what you were pleasantly surprised. I am pleasantly surprised at how well that technology held up while I did that right there. So obviously uh, Zoom and Facebook is getting their, uh, getting their technology up to snuff. And so what have you been pleasantly surprised about? Jerry, what do we got there? While you are typing in what you've been pleasantly surprised about, tomorrow we have Dan Balter, who is going to be talking about how do you systematize your love for your sphere of influence? A really, really very appropriate topic, great for Friday, because many of you got your top 75 done. You're already done. That's I, I have to be pleasantly surprised. I've been pleasantly surprised by how fast you guys are implementing. Um, the time management class is today with Neil Smith at 2.30 Eastern. Check the events. You do need to register. You can register at the events in the Generosity Generation group. Also, next Tuesday, we will be having grading your database, Grading 101 with Sandy Creston next Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Check out the events in this group, and you can do that there. So we've had a lot of people pleasantly surprised by how to do a watch party. I mean, how cool is that? You guys learned how to do a watch party. You click share, and then you can start a watch party. Very good. Uh, I am pleasantly surprised with how much my non-real estate clients truly love your program and that you're using part of their education time at home, having the kids watch you as well. Oh, that no pressure there, right? Now we're educating the, the children of the world. Uh, so, and I have to give, the last thing I wanna do before I introduce and bring on our very esteemed guest today is I need to give a shout out. Shalee Davis, uh, so she heard, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. So she sent these to me yesterday, but here's the thing. I got a package this morning from Shalee Davis. And she sent these from somebody at Etsy or somewhere else. But look at this. Like she sent me 20 lighthouse handwritten notes, but she sent me, I think there's 40 more here. So I am set for handwritten notes for the next couple of weeks. But I have to point something out is that Shalee did not just do the minimum. She didn't, I mean, she did something awesome. She sent me handwritten note cards with lighthouses on it, which are perfect gift for me. Well, what's amazing, she didn't stop with one bundle. She got me three bundles. You know, that, I mean, they're, and, and from two different places. That's memorable. That's remarkable. That's like what the generosity generation is all about. I also need to give a shout out to Shelly Hummel, who just commented, what a great segue. She sent me this awesome shirt dry fit shirt that says Bend on it. Can you guess where she's from? Bend, Oregon. That's right. And in today's world, you know, it's not about breaking. It's about bending. And we need to bend a little bit, not break. And look at this. Look at what Shelly Hummel sent me. She sent me her heart on a hook. She said, this is actually Shelly Hummel's actual heart on a hook from her home to my home. And uh, Shelly Hummel, thank you for the note as well. I really appreciate that. And uh, wow. I mean, like, wow. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you for the amazing generosity generation that we are living and implementing on a daily basis. And that, lead, that leads to our esteemed guest today. He was born in La Crosse, Wisconsin. We won't judge him by that. But he now lives in Orlando, <laughs> the funnest place on earth. Uh, which is very appropriate because this is a very fun and passionate guy. And he has been consistently rated as people's favorite speakers. Our podcast that we did for referrals podcast is still one of the favorite podcasts. In November of 2018, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't take forever for this stuff to work. You know, everybody's like, oh, build relationships. It's the long game. 
it's the marathon. Well, what if it could be a sprint and a marathon? You know, what if it could be work short term and long term? He's found a way to make it short term as well as building these great long term relationships. And he is a high energy, passionate guy, value driven approach to sales and service. He's a certified referral trainer for us. He's also a certified referral coach. He's been given a lot of titles. He's been called a lot of things, people. But the things, the titles that mean the most to him are husband and friend. Tommy grew up in Wisconsin, as I said before, now lives in Orlando, Florida, with his husband, Marco, and two cats, Squeaky and Whiskers. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's open up the, the, the curtain and let's bring on one of our favorite people in the world, Tommy Sandvik. Welcome to The Daily Dose. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it is, I'm so excited, like uh, just crazy excited. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And that's what I love about you is, is everywhere you go, you bring energy. I, I, I've said before that there are some people that light up the room when they come in. And then there's other people that the room lights up as soon as they leave. But in your case, you're the guy who, when you come into the room, the energy in the room rises. And, and uh, I love that about you. And I, I want you, before we jump into these really powerful questions, the forgotten strategy. Tell us a little bit about your 7L story. How did how did you learn about the book and and kind of what what did you do in the beginning? And I have to tell you, I'm genuinely curious because I don't know, I don't know all I know bits of the story, but I, I don't know the whole story. Yeah, I um well basically I wanted to figure out how to build relationships because the company that I was with their idea of a playbook was to go out and, you know, pound the pavement and cold call. And that's just not who I am. I, I realized in my own past that the people who always joined me or came on board had personally met me. So I knew that I could figure that out. I just wanted to duplicate it and say, okay, how do I meet new people mm. and end up in that same, uh, in that same result. And so um, I actually Googled, I literally Googled, what does it mean to build a relationship? Because I figured someone out there has to have figured this out. Mm. And I stumbled across 7L and I just started to, uh, you know, I got the book and I started digging deeper and deeper. And I tell you, I absorbed everything I could find. Though the referrals podcast did not exist. That's right. So I had to f Google your name and just start listening and absorbing to whatever I could find, wherever I could find it. And as I did that, um, I finally did a call with coach and I, um, let's see, Lori Knudsen was my coach. Wow. And um, on that call, I remember I did not even have the money to buy stamps to do handwritten notes, which is mm. kind of really the first step in the book. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, so in true, in the true spirit of tenure generosity, it was literally just, how can I help? I mean, I asked her for the next step and because she, she could so recognize that, just give me that next step. I wasn't ready yet. Um, and so I, I joined in Catalyst in November. Um, and that, again, was a huge, a huge leap of faith um, to, uh, and to a huge investment. take that on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A huge investment. And then on top of that, this is something that's not well known either, but I'm not, I think it's important to share that December of 18, my cards went into repossession for non-payment mm. and I still signed up for event mastery. Wow. And I knew that, you know, so it makes me emotional because yeah. it, it really is um, looking at that progress so far. There's a lot more progress I, to come. All right, hold on, hold on. So, <laughs> so before we yeah. even get into the progress. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking November and December of 2018. We're not mm -hmm. talking 2014 or 2011. You know, we're talking a year and four months ago. And let's just call it 18 months ago, year and a half. So in November, you signed up uh, stretching yourself. You had no money and you yeah. stretched into Catalyst. And because coaching was still a bigger investment than, than even Catalyst, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you did Catalyst and you were having success with Catalyst. And, but, you know, it hadn't, it hadn't kicked in yet right? Yeah. The income hadn't kicked in. The results yeah. hadn't kicked in yet. And you got a little bit of a success. And then in December, Event Mastery was offered for the first time ever. And you signed up 
even though it was going to be a big stretch and they were on the verge of taking your car. Yeah. Like why? Like what? Like, I mean, I'm genuinely curious in this answer is like, like, like a, I'm glad I didn't know that. Cause that's a lot of pressure, <laughs> but <laughs> so but that's better that way. Right. Is like, what, what made you do that? I mean, seriously, <laughs> what, I mean, it's yeah. like, well, you know, and I, by the way, we are not condoning <laughs> not making your car payment so that you can sign up for a coaching with us. I just want everybody to know that. But, yeah. but so what, that's a leap of faith, you know, yeah, Talk about I, going from fear to faith. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's because I knew specifically with event mastery and, and events in general, um, I had been trying to run events previously. Um, I had, I had run my own event for over a year at that point and um, tried different things. And I just knew that there, I like systems. I am a systems guy. And I was, I just realized that, Hey, I think this can really work. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Melissa, who was on the podcast a few episodes ago, um, contacted me and I saw an opportunity there to um, kind of partner on that event. And, and I just, I just took the leap. I think, you know, when you hit rock bottom, you got nowhere to go, but up, you know, yeah, and, and in, in, True fairness, much credit to my mother who definitely helped me through that time. Um, and now she's a, you know, a big supporter and, um, and has watched this journey uh, as well. So I, I do have to throw that in there. <laughs> so, amen. Love you, mom. Hope you're watching. And, and it's like, hi, mom. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, the other part is, okay, so what was your biggest aha out of event mastery? Like you, you went through and, and listen, I, I just want people to know this is not a commercial for event mastery. This is not a commercial for catalyst. I have to be honest with you. I'm genuinely curious. And, and this does lead to today's subject in a very big way. So, yeah, my biggest aha was the power that first event. I, um, I was honestly maybe a little disappointed, but I also got great feedback from the people who showed up. And I realized the power of putting people together who generally speaking have the same mindset mm -hmm. as it relates to things. It was a lot of my networking group that came and they raved about it. And it, it gave me the confidence to be able to move forward. And I think throughout the whole journey, every step of the way, when I take those you know, leaps of faith, I celebrate whatever positive component I can take out of it. And that gives me the um, mindset to keep going forward. So you took event mastery. And then when did you become a CRT? Uh, CRT was November of 19. Yeah. Okay. So one year yeah. you became a certain, came down three, three, three days of intensive training and became a certified referral trainer. And, uh, and, and then now you're training and you're training mm -hmm. the B2B world on referrals and, and helping people build their businesses based on love, generosity, and appreciation. And you've, you've discovered like this secret set of questions that seem to unlock the keys to relationships. And, and it's called the forgotten strategy. And so, so what, is, what is the forgotten strategy? And do we need to make sure we don't forget it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, definitely need to make sure. I think it's, it to, you know, what kind of came up, it came out as how do we, a lot of people struggle to generate referrals for other people. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when you start talking about referrals in the marketplace and you sit down with people and you say, well, how can I help you? They go, send me a referral. Well, you can't send everybody a referral. That's just not enough. But when you start asking people what their challenges are, that starts to open the door. And so it's as much a way to generate referrals for others to have that reciprocity opportunity um, as it is uh, for yourself. And so we were analyzing as we've been building the company entirely in this way, um, I'd say 95% in this way, um, we've realized that that's a big component of, you know, being able to give first. And when you're in networking groups, especially where there's an expectation of that, um, it, you have to get creative and, and find ways. And so I started looking around and it just kind of popped in my mind to go back to this strategy, which I had um, studied a little bit, but we hadn't fully implemented. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically when the dominoes started to call, fall, when Disneyland closed and I knew Disney World was going to be next, events were going to be canceled, I called an emergency meeting with the company and I said, 
hey, we need to learn this and we need to execute it um, as much as we can over the next, uh, until we're out of this for sure. How can we put uh, deposits in the emotional bank account with people? Um, so we did that, we role played and, and have been rolling that out. It's amazing how easy it is to role play. It's amazing how easy it is to, to do this and yet the results are profound. The, the result uh, can be a, a 10x multiplier or a 38x multiplier. It's, it's amazing how often like going through this turns somebody who was a stranger into an ambassador just through a series of questions. So let's, let's jump right. It's, I was, uh, I did the, the interview with Dan Balter, I don't know, a couple months ago, and I kept saying, no, 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 wait, we're going to do the questions at the end. We're going to, and I made, I kind of teased it and made them wait. We're not going to okay. do that today okay. because today is so <laughs> no. powerful the, that, you know what, I want to unpack it. I want to unpack it, do it, and then really unpack it on the back end as well because it, it, there's so much to it, you know? So, so what are the seven questions? You know, what, what is the, the forgotten strategy? And by the way, this, this, at one time, this was three questions, then it was four questions, then it was four and a half questions, which is really five questions. And now it's seven questions, which yeah. we all love, right? Yeah. Because it's the number seven. Yeah. So, so let's, let's just go through it. Yeah. So the first question is just, what is your biggest challenge right now? Mm. So does it matter? It, can I say frustration? Can I say a uh, thing you're trying to overcome? Does it have to be what is your biggest challenge right now? I think I, I think I, I personally look at it as I just follow whatever is do what Michael says. Isn't that wasn't there a chain going on that earlier today? <laughs> the hashtag. You know, <laughs> we got to get rid of that hashtag, by the way. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I, so challenge, right? Challenge. Yeah, People say yeah. frustration, you might turn into like a bitch and moan session, right? If, yeah. if you say challenge, then then you get that. And you know, one of the things that, that you said this, and, and I'm kind of giving your words back to you is is you have to say the words right now. Or what you'll do is you'll actually get a challenge that they recently conquered and they don't need any help with. You know, the setup of this is what is your biggest challenge right now? You know, which is, you know, on off the top of your head. The other thing too is, is that if you say right now, you will, they will actually answer from an emotional place versus a logical place. And the other power of this is asking it in a Zoom or in person or on the phone because you're more likely A, to get the truth, and B, you're also likely to get them to answer from an emotional place, versus if you emailed this, they have time to think about it. You know, what is my biggest challenge right now? And then they talk about something that they've already conquered, you know? So there's a lot of power to this, this question being done right now on the phone, in FaceTime, or in Zoom. So what is your biggest challenge right now? And they, they answer, right? And they mm -hmm. say, you know, whatever they say, what are some answers that you're getting to that? Uh, usually something around time. Um, mm -hmm. I, I tell you, the, you uh, we've had, you know, uh, trouble with uh, reciprocation. So I asked, um, I was kind of pulling some people around and going, well, my, my challenge is I'm struggling to open the door for other people. Oh, yeah. um, they, I've had that come across um, and um, just, various ways of navigating through all of this schedules being up in the air kind of yeah, goes back virus. to time right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they're like the virus that's a yeah. that's a challenge right um yeah that's been a big one and so you know sometimes i get i still tend to get like surface level or you know just that initial response i've also done like what keeps you up at night Mm -hmm. uh, where that can, and that depends on the relationship with the yeah. person, right? If it's, if it's a deeper relationship, you can really try to dig deeper. Um, or what haven't you told anyone else yet? That's yeah. kind of on the back of your mind that you haven't verbally expressed. If they're an external processor, the way I am, they get massive value out of just verbalizing that. Yeah. What's powerful is we've covered one question and <laughs> yeah. there's so much to the first question that, you know, another thing on this is, you know, what is your biggest challenge right now? They will either say professionally or personally, or they will give you a professional business minded answer, or they will give you a personal challenge. You can, you know how your relationship is with the other person by how they answer this question. If they answer from a professional standpoint, you have a professional relationship. If they answer from a personal standpoint, 
then guess what? There's a personal relationship. If they say personal or professional, then you probably have a very well-balanced relationship with this person. So it, it's amazing like what we get, you know, the answer behind the answer, you know, it's, it's, it's really powerful. So they've given us their, their biggest yeah. challenge right now. What's, what's next? What, what's, what's the next question? Yeah, so then finding out what they've tried. So what have you tried so far um, to solve it? And I love that one because it forces me to not assume right? and be being curious. Um, and it's helping them draw out their own answer uh, along the way. So what, what have you tried so far? So that if you, like, I'm a problem solver. I love to solve problems. Sometimes if they're done the wrong way, that can come off negatively. So that allows you to um, let them verbalize first so you don't give them a solution that they've actually already tried. That kind of breaks rapport. Um, so I've been really focusing on, uh, so what have you tried so far? And, and no <laughs> Zip it. Yeah, <laughs> silent, uh, you know, like Todd Duncan said on Monday, you know, silent and listen have the, the same letters in it. To, to really listen, we're gonna have to remain silent and even stay silent a few seconds after they're finished answering to make sure they're finished answering. And, and I love that. And uh, what I love about this too is, is that, you know, how many people have done that where it's like they say their biggest challenge and then you go right into advisor mode and helper mode and you try to help and you advise and you go, you should do this, you should do this. And then you find out that they've already tried it and they poo poo it. And all of a sudden the entire conversation goes, goes southward. You know, so what have you tried so far? And, and they, they tell you, you know, what they've, they've tried so far. I love it. Then what? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, I have like an extra one that depending on the relationship I'll do, um, because I have a, I have a high performance coaching background and we were always taught it takes like kind of three runs to get to the real root. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, as you dig deeper, there's more opportunity. So we'll just say what else. Mm -hmm. um, in, in coaching, I would ask what else three times um, to really go down, go down deeper. So, you know, again, depending on your comfort level in the relationship, um, I think just saying, what have you tried so far? And then what else that's going to draw out even more and make it even more powerful. It's genius. That's genius, right? We keep digging, right? What else have you tried? What? A, and the other thing it does is it protects you from later on in the conversation, suggesting something that they've already tried. And you can say, hey, listen, I know you've tried time blocking, but maybe have you tried it this way? You can, you can really come from a place of, of power, you know, knowledge is power, uh, because they've exhausted the, uh, the, the, the list of things that they've tried so far. So, so you get the, the three layers of what else? What else, what else have you tried? What else have you tried? What else? And they're like, Man, that's it. I've tried a lot. I've 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 said all of them, and you know I that's that's it. That's all that I've tried. Yeah. So then the next one is okay. So what are you gonna do next? Mm. You know, what what can you do next? Yeah. So what are you gonna do next? So so you go right into solution. You know that's the beauty of this. Is is uh, you know it reminds me of feel uh, feel felt found. You know yeah. is is uh, you know. I, I understand how you feel. I've had clients who have felt the same way. And, and here's what they've found. If they do this, they have success. You know, it's, it's now, it's past, and then it's forward or future based, you know? And it's like, all right, what is your biggest challenge right now? What have you tried so far? All right, what are you going to do next? I love that. I love that. So what are you going to do next? And so, they're like, you know, I'm not sure. Or they say, you know, I think I'm going to do this. Then what? Yeah. So then what's the first next step? Mm. So because, yeah, they'll, they'll, do, they'll go like high level. Well, yeah. you know, I need, okay. So what's the very first, just to get them moving, um, yeah. is this, what's the very first next step? Yeah. Um, okay. So what's your first next step? And I love the, the power of the first and the next, right? Those two words. Uh, they work together very well. You know, first is small and next is literally like step one, you know? So I love that. Uh, and it's future-based, um, solution-based. Okay. So they tell you their first next step, you know, after thinking about it, quite honestly. Yeah. Are you enjoying the Daily Dose 
Want to connect with thousands of other business owners that are winning the referral game while working from home right now? Head over to the Generosity Generation Facebook group. Connect with leaders, visionaries, and business owners from all over the world. Go to www.joingengen.com. That's www.joingengen.com. Um, so the next one, and this is, this is the one I love because it starts to open the doors for others, I feel, is who can help you with that first next step? Yeah, that's a powerful, right? The who, yeah. you know, and, and, and I love this because you're also, you're still not advising the, the, you know, the who is not you still, you know, and I love that. I love that about this is so who can help you with that? And a lot of times like, well, I need to set up my website think, Well, I need a web designer or I need a graphic designer or I need whatever. And so they tell you what they need. Then what? Yeah. So then, um, you know, by when, mm. uh, it, you know, by it kind of ties in with the first next step, right? So by when, yeah. um, are, are you going to do that? So you're creating accountability, mm -hmm. uh, basically, and a yeah. reason. Well, anyway, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the buy when the buy when is, is when you're going through these questions and it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then it's like, and all right. So by when, you know, when are you going to have this first next step? And it's like, you can hear the air like suck out of the room and it's like, Ooh, you know, it's like, Oh wait, you mean I'm going to actually need to get this done? Yeah. It's your biggest challenge right now. Right. So they, they tell you, right. They say, I'm going to get it done next week, or I'm going to get it done Friday, or I'm going to get it done by the end of the day, or I'm working on it right now. Then what? How would you like me to follow up? Yeah. Yeah. How can I help? Right. How yeah. can I follow up? How can I help? And, uh, I, I love that. Right. And they're like, well, I don't know, you know, so what do you say if they say, I don't know, you know, how do you want to follow up? Uh, I would give them, I would say, Hey, phone text, yeah. uh, even what, what works best for you, yeah. which I think also is powerful because you're kind of getting their communication preference, right. Yeah. Uh, indirectly. Yeah. Uh, without directly asking. So that, so that's, let's do it. That's powerful. Let's do it. All like, right. Like no messing around here. Okay. And you know what? I have to tell you, I have the utmost confidence in you because I would not, <laughs> and this is not on, this has not been rehearsed, people. <laughs> no. Welcome to real life, right? Oh, man. So let's do it. So go through the conversation and just ask me the questions. And, and here's what's really interesting about this is I have probably asked, what is your biggest challenge right now? A hundred thousand times. And, and I mean, Sherry, am I exaggerating with that? Do you think that I've asked, what is your biggest challenge now over the last 20 years, 100,000 times? What do you think? No, Sherry, can you hear me? Sherry. Can she, <laughs> she couldn't hear me. How many times do you think that I've asked, what is your biggest challenge right now? Like over the last five years? A lot. A lot. She gave me a lot. Very specific, a lotness, right? So a lot. So a lot. And you know what? I've been asked twice. I've been asked wow. twice, you know, and, and all that time I've actually had somebody use my own script back on me only twice. So, so this is good. This is going to be good. So let's, let's, let's roll through it. And I honestly, I have no preconceived answers to any of these. So, uh, a, it might be really revealing and some of you might look less, uh, look at me as less or look upon me less. I don't know, whatever, but I don't care. So we're going to do it. So All right. let's do that it. Works. Let's do it. We're on a Zoom call and it's just right. me and you and looks like about 3,000 others. All good. Yeah. <laughs> All good. All good. Yeah. So, um, hey, I would love to hear, Michael, you know, what is your biggest challenge right now? Staying in shape, losing Staying weight. Shape. You know, I've gained, I've gained some weight with the COVID thing. At least that's what I'm blaming. <laughs> it, the COVID did not feed me. So my biggest challenge right now is, is losing weight or get, I mean, I'm in decent shape, but I could be in better shape, but really it's losing weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Makes, makes a lot of sense. A lot of yeah. people definitely uh, feeling that right now. Um, all right. So, so what have you tried so far uh, to help you? Not much, to be honest. I, I play baseball three times a week with my son, but I've been eating like a horse. You know, I've been, I've been eating a little bit out of control. So I literally have really, I've maybe watched what I've eaten the last week 
better than I did the week before. So maybe that. Okay, good, good, good. What, uh, what else in the, uh, you know, what else have you tried to? Yeah, I did elliptical a couple of days ago and worked out with my son, but we, we did it one day and then it was baseball the next day and then it's baseball today. So yesterday we missed, I missed the time that I would have done elliptical and worked out with my son. So yeah, I ended up having calls at the time that I was supposed to be doing elliptical. So I broke, I broke the hard appointment for the easy appointment. Mm, okay. So I, actually what I hear from there is like, it's um, time and a little bit of time, time block kind of component. So also yeah. maybe like a, a challenge. There. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what are you going to do next? Mm. I've had a lot of success with keto uh, in the past. My meals have not been keto. So I think meeting uh, with uh, my meal prep expert, <laughs> which is in the room, uh, <laughs> to, to uh, come up with a more keto friendly uh, meals. It's really 80% of my weight revolves around my meals. I'm pretty active. So exercise doesn't help me lose weight. What really helps me lose weight is you can't outrun your fork, you know? So, so my fork has been very influential lately. So so I think going back to a keto friendly uh, set of meals and, and we do that. I mean, like we have that ability, we've done it before. I've had success with it before. Yeah. So, okay. So what's the first next step to get you back to Meet, meet, with Sher- meet with Sherry meet with and Sherry. go through the meal plan and literally create the meal plan and uh, make sure that we've got the ingredients for it. And we're going to stop buying in bulk. That, that's the other thing I'm going to suggest to her. We bought in bulk and then I ate it. You know, we got two weeks of food, so I ate it in two days and didn't feel well for, for three days. <laughs> I think you know? my husband would be like, yeah, it's just like you. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 totally, totally I mean, <laughs> you know, we, it, we all, you know, it's a, it's a pleasant excuse right now. We have yeah. a pleasant excuse, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and I, you know, I'm tired of it. So I'm, I don't like the way I feel when I'm heavier and, and I'm in a, I'm in a, uh, I'm at a place where like, it's not that hard to get back to a flat belly you know, and I'm not in a flat belly. So it's, 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 in a, it's, so it's very noticeable, you know, I'm in that kind of that range, you know, yeah. once you get to flat belly, having a flatter belly is hardly noticeable, you know, but it's like, you know, feeling a little bloated and then flat belly is very, it's very liberating for me. It feels better. It looks better. Clothes fit better. That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So by when are you going to uh, meet with Sherry. Sherry, can we meet today on keto, like keto friendly meals? Yes. Like what time? So we'll figure out a time today. Five. five we're going to meet at five o'clock today. Okay. Fantastic. With, which uh, we'll have to move that a little bit because we'll probably be playing baseball four to six. So I guess. Oh, okay. So we'll do it after baseball. There you go. We're going to stack baseball. it. We're going to stack it with baseball and I'll be really open to conversation at that point. Cause I will have just run around and probably done 12,000 steps uh, on the baseball field. So yeah. And feeling good and uh, feeling good. That's like right. And, 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 and yeah. And in the yeah. right mindset. That's exactly right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. How would you like me to follow up? Um, so why don't you contact me tomorrow to okay. make sure that we met and ask me, what am I eating? Okay. What am I eating on Friday? Okay. Right. There you go. What What method? Like, yeah. I mean, I have text a message. Or... You have text. my text okay. number, so text text message okay. me. Okay. Text message me around noon. Okay. And just and just uh, let me you know ask me how how the meeting went and what I'm eating and that'll be great. Okay, you got it. I will yeah. do that. Yeah. I love All right. It. So where do you go from there? Well, from there, I mean, it just depends on the conversation. I think. Um, I try to, um, you know, it can go a lot of different ways. I've had times where I'm able to um, do some kind of follow up. Yeah. So usually, as how I'm are you going gonna remember through, that? How are you going to remember to contact me? Like how? What would oh. you do? Like if they said contact me at noon tomorrow and yeah. just make hold me accountable. What What would you do normally on that? And by the way, well, I do want you to text me tomorrow. 
I will. Uh, I well, two things. I usually when I'm in one to ones and I'd be asking this like in person, I have a, a one to one book, so I'm writing yeah. stuff down, taking notes. Yeah. Um, Look at and that. then uh, yeah. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, yeah, blessing book. <laughs> right. My one to one book. Of those. Right there. I mean, yeah, book. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, the other thing I would do is probably is put a reminder in the calendar is the easiest thing for me um, so that it'll, it'll pop up at a time. Like I have every time that my husband goes to work 10 minutes before I get a reminder and then yeah. I say, have a good day at work. So you I ever do Siri, you ever use Siri at all? No, okay. I honestly don't. I tried yeah. a few times, but yeah, haven't, haven't yeah she, it she's so me. inconsistent still, yeah. you know, it's just like set a reminder for tomorrow at noon and she says yeah. it's central time or she, you know, what do you want me to remind you about? You know, and it's like call and it's like, oh, I got to open it up and type it anyway. It's easier just to go to my Google calendar and put it in yeah. the calendar. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, I like it. Okay. And so before I get to ask this of Tommy, I want those of you, listen, what we're delivering here is tremendous value. This is a valuable lesson that is going to allow you to give massive value first. It does not cost you a dime and yet will result in more referrals than you've ever gotten in your life. I mean, I can't precursor or set it up any stronger or better than, than that. So here's my question for all of you. Many of you are taking pages and pages of notes. What is your favorite question? out of the seven or eight questions that we've asked. What is your favorite question? So everybody that's watching this on live, or if you're in a watch party, which I'm recommending all of you have watch parties in your Facebook groups that we help you create and lead, what, what is your favorite question out of all of those questions? So I wanna know, and, and I want Tommy to wait, which is a very awkward and hard thing to do during an interview, um, but, like I want everybody else to answer, what is your favorite or what question is the most powerful for you? For which of those do you like the most? And I want you to answer that in the comments below. Go. All right, so what do you got? Who can help you with that? I love that. Um, Sherry McGuire, what do you say? Uh, what else? Christina Oziak said, what else is the most powerful question for me? Yeah. I love it. Uh, question, Chris, what is question number one? And I want to make sure that you have your notes right. What'd she say? What's your biggest challenge right now? What, what is your biggest challenge right now? It's not what is your biggest challenge. It is what is your biggest challenge right now? You want to tap into the limbic part of their brain. Uh, Crystal says, how can I follow up? Uh, Josh says, uh, what are you doing about it? Okay, I'm not sure if that's one of the questions that he said. I don't, I don't, I think it's, what are you going to do next is the actual question. Man, I'm glad we covered that. Tina Mayner says, what are you going to do next? Uh, Patty Lucas says, what is the first next step? And I love that because we talk about the one degree tweak. What you're essentially helping them do is take the one degree tweak. Here's what's amazing about this, Tommy, is I said, what is the most powerful or the favorite question for you? It's literally been all of them. People have different questions among all seven of them. So I'm going to ask you, what question is the most powerful for you, in your opinion? I, I think um, that is a very good question. Thank you. Um, that's, that's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> that, that is true, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I think it's um, it's for me. It's what have you tried so far? Okay. Um, so what do you like about that? It it um, it's a growth point for me to mm -hmm. uh, learn to take my high eye and put it on the shelf for a second. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and shut up. <laughs> and also in and not not assume. I think that's so important and I'm really working on that component of my interactions with people. Uh, it it takes a lot of work it, to overcome uh, bad habits <laughs> when it comes to things like that. Yeah, so so yeah. it forces you to be quiet. Yeah. And and silently listen to the answer. And, and, and so what's, 
So A, it's a personal growth point for you. But what do you think that does for the person that you're in the one-on-one with? Yeah, I think that it actually helps them feel better about themselves because Mm -hmm. what you're saying, what's effectively whenever they say to what they've tried so far is like, hey, like you've, you've moved the needle, like you've tried different things. And as long as you're trying different things, you don't, you don't get stuck. So I figure um, that's helping, that's something that you can acknowledge to them and celebrate for, hey, that's, that's fantastic. You've tried that, you know, and it's, it's just a positive experience, I think, for them to um, help them even recognize, uh, because we're all so hard on ourselves. Um, it, yeah. it helps them recognize uh, the progress that they have made uh, to try to find that solution. So people won't remember what you say. They rarely remember what you do, but they'll always remember how you make them feel. Thank you, Maya Angelo. And here's the thing on that is when you're done with these questions, people feel liberated and powerful because they have a plan. It may just be a short term one thing plan, but I have to be honest with you. I feel great that I'm going to meet at six o'clock and go through a keto friendly and get back on the plan. You know, I feel good about that. I feel good that we focused on something and that it's narrowed it down to one thing that I can do today to, to conquer it. And what these questions do, if you really look at it metaphysically, which I'm going to go there. So metaphysically, it's what is your biggest challenge right now? Listen, how many of, the people below, the, the people that are commenting, the people who, who are watching this, how many of you have ever had anybody ever ask you, what is your biggest challenge right now? And, and the truth is, is none of you have ever had any, nobody has cared enough to ask you, what is your biggest challenge right now? Isn't that amazing? Like here's, so why don't people ask you? Why, do, why isn't that a common question? It's not because we all have enough challenges of our own and we sure in the hell don't want to take on other people's challenges, right? So that's why we don't ask, what is your biggest challenge right now? Sure, feed me, baby. Feed me more challenges, right? So what? Yeah, never. Nobody's ever been asked, right? So to reiterate that statement. So here's the thing is, what is your biggest challenge right now? And for you, Tommy, when you asked me that, You allowed me to take this big giant stress ball out of my soul and put it on the table. And I've got this stress ball, right? We've talked about crystal balls. Now we're talking about a stress ball. And there is this, we all have it. We all have shoulds and it's all these shoulds combined into this, this, this swimming, think of like an atom, right? And it's, and it's a stress ball and you say, and I go, and I put it on the table and you're like, okay, good. And you say, what have you tried so far? Which allows us both essentially me to, to mess with the the stress ball and the stress ball gets a little bit smaller. And then you say, all right, so what have you tried or what are you going to do next? At that point, the stress ball is like this big and I'm holding it like this. And it's like, all right, what are you going to do next? And it's like, Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do this. And I take the stress ball back and it's the size of a tennis ball and it's manageable. It's, it's able to be handled and, and I know what to do with it, you know? And, and so how would you feel if your stress ball went from this big on your shoulders, like an Atlas, and you took it down to just a little tennis ball. And, and that's what it, but, but here's the beauty of this is, what did Tommy walk away with? Tommy didn't walk away with my tennis ball. And some of you need to hear that lesson is you don't need to take on their challenge. Don't make it about your success. You know, some of you want it to be, well, if they take my suggest and, and it's successful, then they'll think more of me. It doesn't work that way. You know why people think more of you? They think more of you because you've helped them solve their own problem. What you are saying is you are an intelligent human being who can solve your own problems, and I'm just here to help. And isn't it cool that Tommy isn't taking on my tennis ball? He's not taking on 11 people in a row's tennis ball to the point where he's got his own problems, and now he's got 11 tennis balls to go with his 
his stress, you know? So you've given it back to them and they've taken it and they've owned it, but it's smaller. So I feel good. Tommy is just sitting there. He really hasn't taken on anything more than a text message at noon tomorrow. And it's a win, 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 you know, so powerful. Yeah. Literally, I, I literally, we, we could teach a 10 day class. It was so All cool because I, I actually ran an event this way where I taught it and then had the whole room doing it with each other. Yeah. And that was so cool. I mean, that, it, it was, I, there were, I think about 20 people there. Um, this was middle of February. And uh, it, it's, it's the coolest thing when you have people uh, teaching it and then doing it together. Um, and there's, a, there's the added benefit where when you get around to who can help you with that, that is absolutely an opening sometimes for introductions to other people, other professionals who can help them with their challenges. You know, if you, if, if you didn't have that figured out, then that's an opportunity. But, hey, you know, I, I know someone. Would you like an introduction? There can be an opportunity there. Um, or following up after the fact and saying, hey, I was thinking about this and thought you may find this helpful. So, uh, as well. boom, right? So, number one, ABC... The old ABCs always be closing. The new is always be connecting. It creates a connecting opportunity. You can refer it out to someone who does whatever their biggest challenge can be conquered with. The, the second thing is the afterwards is you text me at noon tomorrow. How do I feel about Tommy when he text messages me tomorrow at noon? I think he's responsible. He's referable. He's, he's trustworthy. Like, like he does what he says he's going to do. So guess what? You become more referable without having all the weight of all the other stuff. You become more referable just because you did what you said you were going to do, which is a text message at noon. And you have this great little tool right here that will allow you to be a prop. This is all this is right here. Does everybody know what this is? All this is, it's not a paperweight, right? It's not a game machine. This is a promise keeper. This is your promise keeper. So treat your phone as a promise keeper. And Tommy, we have a, a question from Brenda Conine, who, by the way, is just rocking the Gen Gen group. Uh, and by the way, questions, please put them below. We only have about five minutes left, so make sure you put your, your questions below and we'll get those. She said, have you... Or what do you do when asked when you ask the biggest challenge and they act defensive or they don't share their biggest challenge? Have you ever had that happen? Or what would you do? Or what do you do when it happens? I think the best example I had was when I, uh, so I'd say I've kind of had that happen where it was like, well, the biggest challenge right now is, I'm about to be flooded in work, but I'm not ready yet to hire other people mm -hmm. to support that. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, so we, we, I was actually calling um, this individual specifically about, um, uh, specifically about, I was polling the audience for what my next event was going to be. Yeah. And, um, and so I just kind of remembered that. And I, that's the cool thing is you just remember what may be coming, especially when it's your ambassadors. Um, and fast forward about two months later, and um, I wasn't getting any response from, from him uh, when I was texting him about the event. And I thought, something's, something's not up. This isn't like him. It's not normal. What's going on here? And so I ended up, a friend of mine uh, who's now in the, um, is in the group, um, he uh, was looking for extra work. So I put two and two together. Yeah. So I helped him solve this problem two months later um, by a, a connection. And now I've got two people solve their problems. And that was like the light bulb really, really, really went on when that happened because I said, that's, that's incredible. If we you just couldn't get in that habit. at the time. Yeah. So you felt, yeah. so you felt maybe less, you know, you felt like you didn't help even yeah. though you really did help. And yeah. many times they'll solve their own problem. I've been in a situation where I was at a lunch with a CFO of Sprint. And, and I went through the questions with him and I said, well, what are you going to do next? And he sat there for 30 seconds. Now this is live. We're at a lunch. So I, I wanted to tap him and make sure you're still alive. I mean, like he didn't move for 30 seconds. 
he left. We had ordered food and I was just going through these questions. And then it was like, what are you going to do next? He went back to work. Like, and, and just, you know, for the record, I did eat his lunch as well as mine. But the thing is, is that he was, you know, he was gone. Like he solved his own problem. But you know what's funny? To this day, he still gives me credit. And I didn't solve anything. I just asked the right questions, you know? So it, it, it's, that, that's an amazing story on, on your end is that, you know, two months later, it, it clicked. The connection happened and, and, you know, problem solved. And we don't need to feel necessarily that we have to solve all their problems, you know? Uh, but yeah. I will tell you, now that you're a member of the generosity generation, your capacity to help is almost infinite. Like literally, you ask this question, they give you a challenge. It's probably solvable with the members, the people I know and the people Tommy know probably have that solution, you know, yeah. that help. So that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that's how we set ourselves up in the market is that even if a brand new person comes on board and they're kind of like working through this and don't feel all that confident in their network or their ability, it's like, yeah, but you're connected to us. And then the, that extension, which is the whole concept. Um, so it, it works really well that way and it allows you to be always confident that you can help because you've got a network behind you just by being connected. You know, and, this to the is and this is exactly why we had Tommy teach this today. And that's exactly why we had Lori talk about what we should, she talked about yesterday. And that's why we had Steve on Tuesday. And that's why we had Todd on Monday, right? It, the cascade goes into, are you a solutionist, right? Are you a connector? And are you a solutionist? What if you could be both of those with seven questions and it would not cost you a dime to implement and yet you would deliver the most valuable, the most value in the shortest amount of time. And that's, that's the forgotten strategy that everybody here needs to not forget. So Tommy, wow. I mean, literally, I feel like we're cutting this short and we, this yeah. is probably the longest one we've had, you know, and, and it's so powerful. And, and, and I just want to say, you know, I want to say, say personally, I want to say thank you for going through the questions to help me identify like my next step. And I also want to say thank you so much for like how much you have embraced the 7L system and the generosity generation, becoming a leader in both and uh, really carving out your own, your own niche with this that you're going to impact millions, you know, and uh, I just, I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. And, and to say of all the people in the community, what I have loved so much is how it, look, it starts at the top and there's so many great people all willing to share, um, you know, and there's so much wealth of information uh, and, and knowledge and just so willing to help uh, at any given time. So it's, it's, it's such a great community to be part of, you know, makes it easy. <laughs> thank you. And uh, it's uh, Miles says, thank you as well. So uh, if you didn't hear him yip, that was Miles that I think I just stepped on by accident. So sorry about that. Uh, he's okay for the record. And so is Tommy. And I, I just want everybody to know that, all right, action items. Number one is uh, 75 people by tomorrow. You got to get it done. You've got a movie theater. It fits 75 people who are the funnest, most energetic top 75 top referral sources you've got to identify these people you've got to have them somewhere whether it's a three ring binder it's in a blessings book it's in your journal it's on a whiteboard it's in an excel sheet it's in your crm it is somewhere what you all are going to do coming out of this this covid 19 thing is you're going to have identified the most important people in your life and if that's all you did you win you win the virus, you win. And um, the next thing is remember, tomorrow is Dan Balter, where we're gonna put some of the four things from the previous four days together with Dan Balter talking about systematizing, loving on your sphere of influence. And remember, time management with Neil Smith is coming up just in a, a little while here. And then grading 101 with Sandy Creston is next Tuesday. You can register for both of those at the events tab and that's it ladies and oh by the way hightrust.com slash connect for todd duncan's class keepingcurrentmatters.com for steve harney's 
uh, Keeping Current Matters um, product, which is phenomenal. I am also a client. Uh, and 30 Mornings, today is the last chance to get into 30 Mornings. You can go to 30mornings.com or 30ams.com. And Tommy, did I forget anything? Uh, I wanted to give a shout out. Yeah, let's hear it. Was, okay, my shout out is to my coach, Arnell. Oh, Arnell he, Tanya. He is so full of B2B knowledge. It is yeah. incredible what I'm learning, and he helped me create a shift that has been phenomenal. So I just want to give a shout out to Arnell. Arnell. Yeah, yeah, certified referral coach, Arnell Tanya. Uh, is he like the smartest person you've ever met? Yeah, yeah. Like, he's, he's like, incredible. Yeah, he's the Einstein of of the generosity generation i need to like like you're the ambassador of outrageous <laughs> yeah like like we need to come up with arnell's ambassador like he's he's the ambassador of einstein or the ambassador of genius or something i gotta i gotta figure out what that is so uh thank you for giving that shout out to him and uh i know that you've also worked with neil smith in the past like yeah. early on right and yep, uh, absolutely. That, that was fantastic so uh I, here's the thing is ladies and gentlemen, this is your daily dose of positivity and productivity. Thank you so much for tuning in every single day. Our job is to provide the most amount of value that we can and give you a dose, not a summit, not eight of these back to back. That's so overwhelming. And I know many of you are overwhelmed with learning opportunities. No, it's 30 minutes to an hour in the middle of your day. You get a little dose, positivity, productivity, and then, and then you go about and you do the rest of what you need to do. And uh, today, this one will be one that people will need to replay and replay and replay over again. Tommy, thank you so much thank for you. being our guest on The Daily Dose.